welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Thank you so much for joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. Again today, I have my daughter Annette with me, and we're going to continue talking about quantum faith. <laughs> well, I know what some of you are saying, what in the world is quantum faith? Well, it's different from natural things, and uh, we're going to talk about some things that I think people would be interested in when we talk about the uh, the way quantum physics and quantum mechanics, and I mean, it's all Greek to me, but she's studied a lot in it, and it's some, it sounds a whole lot like what Jesus wrote. That's what I get excited That's right. about. It does, because it talks about that unseen realm that yeah. we can't see. You cannot see atoms. You can't see the electrons. You can't see quarks. You can't see all those little tiny things that are out there. But just because we can't see something does not mean that it does not exist. Hold that thought right there. I, I've got to say this. I've been trying to say it on some of the other broadcasts, and I just let it slip by me. But I've, I've got an article. I don't have it with me. Uh, it says that an atom, a single atom, this is written by a scientist, a single atom can be in two places at the same time. The same right. one now. That's right. And uh, it can be separated as far as one end of the universe. Correct. The same atom separated. <laughs> this sounds crazy. This is quantum physics, I guess. That's right. And, and uh, whatever happens to that atom, it, the other one responds. It's, it's not the other one. It's the same one responds at the same time. It's the same entity, but it can be as far separated, the same atom, as one end of the universe to the other. And whatever happens here, happens here, same time. Now, but that's the, how... Isn't that what we say, there's no time or distance in the spirit? Yeah. Now, I've always wondered, how can we be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and be here on earth? That's it. <laughs> yes, that's how we can be at two places at once, and that is true. They have done those experiments, and I believe I have a newspaper paper article on one. I believe it was a beryllium atom that they took, and they could separate and have the two particles, and they instantly communicate. I mean instantly. Now, when you say instantaneous, that means faster than the speed of light. And but nothing, now it's the same atom. Yes. Its particles are the same atom. Is no, that, is that no, what it was? No, it is the same thing. The same it, atom. It's in more than one place at one <laughs> you, time. You can't hardly say this. You know, well, I mean, it's just, you, you wonder, are we? The Bible uh, says it. The Bible <laughs> says we are seated with Christ, yeah, and we're also right. here. That's right. That's what I was getting at. This, this is the only way you can understand it. And see, science today is revealing some some information where we can understand the Bible better. And and people say, well, you know, science and the Bible are all crossways. No, not real science. And and, and the real teaching of the Bible are not. They correspond. And that, that's what's exciting to me. That's right. The, the issue has arisen when people have misread or misunderstood the Bible, and then scientists occasionally come to conclusions that are only based upon the evidence they have at the time. And, of course, what they're discovering is a lot of the things in the Bible are speaking about physics and laws of faith are actually yeah. laws. It's just that they're in a different realm, okay? Mm -hmm. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And this is That's where it. they come to, well, God, so you can't see God, so he mm -hmm. doesn't exist. But let's just take their own laws with God and go back to some of the laws of physics with God. And one is the special theory of relativity. And that is that objects that move through space faster as they get closer to the speed of light, they become shorter until when they get to the speed of light, they become invisible. Mm -hmm. Now, what did 1 John 1, 5 say? God is light. light. Now, we take that as a metaphor that well, you know, that means God is good, He's light, He's not dark, He doesn't have evil. 
but it says God is light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so God's invisible. We don't see him. And then secondly, it talks about the mass of an object moving. And those of you that are listening to this think it's a science show. Hold on here. There's something <laughs> very important you're going to get out of this. That objects, as they move, the mass becomes greater as they get closer to the speed of light, larger, larger, and larger, until at the speed of light, it's infinite. What does that sound like? <laughs> God is infinite, all right? Yep. And then the other thing is if you take a clock and you move it faster, getting toward the speed of light, when it, it gets slower and slower and slower until when a clock reaches the speed of light, it stops because time ceases to exist. Hmm. Now, let's talk about how can God be everywhere at once? You're talking about those atoms? Mm -hmm. How can God be everywhere at once? How can God be multiple places at one time? It's very simple. You take away the element of time. Yeah. And if there is no time where God exists, then he could be everywhere all at what we consider to be the same time. Mm -hmm. So God can be invisible, well, not visible to the human eye, but in a different realm. God can be infinitely big, infinitely small, and outside the realm of time to where he's everywhere at once. And then he can appear with the body. That's right. Take he more. appeared to Abraham. That's right. And but he'd have to slow to himself door. down a little yeah. bit. See, he'd have to, God would have to lower his frequency. Well, why does it say if any man looks upon God, he wouldn't be able to live? Well, my goodness, if we think about the realm, I'm yeah. talking about a different realms. In all realm, of his glory. In all of his glory where he lives. Well, I guess we'd be, probably be incinerated because we're at a much lower frequency, see? Yeah. But in this unseen realm that we can't see, we know that God exists, and we also know that there are angels in this unseen realm. Right. And I'll never forget the time that you and I were flying to Tulsa, Oklahoma in your airplane, and I was sitting in the front, and I was watching. When you started the propeller, it's solid. You can see it. You could see it as it started turning. But then as we got up to speed, you couldn't see it quite so much until when we were in the air, you saw right straight through that propeller. Now, how can you look through a propeller? Well, it's moving very quickly. And so as it's moving quickly, you see right through it. As I was looking at that, I felt like that God spoke to me in my heart that that's the reason we don't see angels, is that they are moving so quickly and so rapidly that our eyes are not fast enough to catch them. You see, when that propeller's yeah, turning, our eyes just can't catch that yeah, fast it, movement. It's not them that's moving fast, it's their, what they're made up of is right. rotating so fast. Right. We can't, uh, our eyes just can't catch it because their frequency is so fast, so rapid. But they're there, they just happen to be in the other realm. And of course, what we say has an effect on what the angels do also. Okay. because the angels hearken to our words. <laughs> <laughs> and we can either bind them or we can loose them by what we say. Yeah, you, you know that propeller turning, you would you'd look at that and say, well, you couldn't get anything through there, it would just tear it all to pieces, you know. But they learned even in World War I, they, they put a machine gun up there and they'd time that thing off of the cam on that engine and it'd shoot between those flashes of that propeller, and you think, well, we have cut the propeller plum off of this thing, but it shoot it right between it. But fast as it was going, they could still put it between there, and that's why people look at the Word of God and say, well, now, talk to a mountain and it's going to obey you. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Well, it, when you get over into the quantum physics thing, it's, uh, it's bizarre, really. Like, Very bizarre. like the scientists even say, it's bizarre how it acts. It doesn't act as it does in natural things, you know. I mean, it's, it's out there. Jesus was teaching stuff before his time. I mean, Absolutely. he's just trying to bring us up to speed now yes. uh, in, in the world we live. And, uh, you know, I've operated in this calling things that are not over 
20, 30 years now. Every piece of property I ever bought, every piece of property I sold in the last 30 years, I talked to it to buy it, I talked to it to sell it. And somebody said, oh, you think that property is going to obey you? Yeah, I know it'll obey me. Yeah. Jesus said it would, and they dare not disobey Jesus. Do you remember the time you, you, you was going to buy some property up at the mountain, up around Greer's Ferry? And uh, I said, I know a piece of property that I believe you can buy. And uh, we went on, I said, let's go talk to it. Because that's the first thing we would do was talk to the property before you ever make an offer on it. Mm -hmm. And because Jesus said in Luke 17, if you had faith as a mustard seed, you'd say to this sycamine tree, inanimate object, be plucked up by the root, it should obey you, or would obey you. And uh, we, we went over there to talk to it. And we got over there walking around, and I said, hey, I remember I talked to this property 12 years ago. That's the reason it hadn't sold. I said, when it sells, it'll come to me in Jesus' name. And, uh, and <laughs> we got a hold of the lady and talked to her, and, and uh, she said, oh, said another man, I promised him I'd let him have first chance at it. I said, fine, no problem, because I knew he hadn't talked to it. I had 12 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> but the story turned out, of course, we bought the property. It turned out to be a good deal. And somebody said, it doesn't make sense. It may not make sense, but it made dollars, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, part of that deal that goes even back further than that is I had just prayed and I felt like the Lord had told me to give $1,000 to Oral Roberts as a donation. This is before this happened. Yeah. And I had a lot up there, and, or I, and I was getting ready to trade it. You told me another one was coming available, and I picked it up, bought it, and I sent that check to Oral Roberts, just didn't even think it was connected. <laughs> and somebody came by, what, four or five days later after I bought that lot and wanted to buy it? and paid a substantial larger amount of money <laughs> yeah. for it, and I ended up being just tremendously blessed because of that seed that I had sown. And then from that, we uh, took the money, and that's when we began to talk to the other property. So it was just a progression of how these things happen. Yeah. This, this is in the realm of, sound like the realm of quantum physics, voices talking to inanimate objects, and that's what Jesus mm -hmm. said, and Jesus proved it. Uh, sycamine tree obeyed him, the, the uh, fig tree obeyed him, and then you have people saying, I tell you, I just can't keep money. It gets away from me, I just can't keep money. Hey, the, the tree, is, I mean, the money is made out of the tree, and, and it's been obeying them all these years, and they can't understand why. It, because it's so bizarre, the things that Jesus yeah. taught, but they are truth, you know. Yeah. Uh, I get excited about it. It's like it. people that, one of the sayings, you know, our words really uh, tell on us. People yeah. say, well, money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> well, money's made out of trees. It's made out of paper, you know. You could easy, just as easily speak to that. If you had an adversarial relationship with money and you think that, oh, money is evil and it's dirty, then it's going to respond to you in that way. That, that money is, made, is an object, it is a thing, it is made up of those atoms, and it's going to respond to you, and if you think it's money is bad, it's going to flee from you. Yeah. And you know, in, in the natural realm, if you took dollar bills out and put them in the soil and covered them up and fertilized them, they're just going to rot. But Jesus said, uh, you know, you plant a seed. Uh, he said, uh, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. So we're talking about a law that, that, that is so far beyond what natural human thinking is. It's bizarre to people. And, and they think, they look at you like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> somebody said a calf at a new gate, yeah. you know, just <laughs> stare at you. You don't really believe what you're saying that you talk to stuff, do you? Uh, yeah. Uh, and it obeys. Uh, and, and Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, uh, be cast in the sea. Well, I, 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 didn't, I didn't move a mountain up there, but, but uh, I literally talked to a mountain one time in North Arkansas, and uh, they said, you, you can't buy any property up there. It belongs to the, the paper company, and they will sell it. I said, that's subject to change. So me and my wife, Peggy, went out there. And uh, you, you've heard us tell this story. Yes. And, Went out there and picked up the dirt and talked to it. Said, you come to me in Jesus' name. You call, we call you ours. We just want to buy a lot. They wouldn't sell a lot. Ten days later, 
the property came on the market. <laughs> and uh, ended up buying 535 acres instead of one lot. But uh, anyway, it's just amazing how the things that Jesus taught back then, uh, scientists are bringing it together now to where you can understand it a little better. That's right. It reminds me of a situation that we had. My husband and I were uh, trying to sell a piece of property in Oklahoma and it had been up for sale for quite some time and I of course learned well I walked around and I called it sold told it somebody liked it somebody loved it somebody wanted it called it so gonna be a blessing to someone and uh, finally one day it just didn't sell so I thought what else do I need to do I thought well what I want is a contract on it right for a certain amount of money so I got a contract wrote it up filled it in signed our names on it left the buyers name blank uh, my husband and I went out to the property and I said, well, let's just plant it. So we dug a hole with a shovel and we planted that contract in the middle of that property. <laughs> and it was about, I believe, a week later and someone came and said they want this to build a, an assisted care nursing home on. They bought it I'll and it, the contract was signed. Not the one we put in the dirt. We got a new <laughs> one. But anyway, we planted it. But it works. It works. It absolutely does work. Uh, you, you were there one time when I talked to a, a mortgage that I had a note and uh, I called you out of the bedroom. I said, I want you to be a witness. I'm going to do what Jesus said. Jesus said it would obey me. I want to get rid of this mortgage. I, I'm getting many, so many calls to teach the Word of God. I want to spend more time doing that. And I, I, I said, you're paid in full. Uh, you dear dematerialize, be gone, you're paid. You d and, and every adjective I think describe it. And, uh, and I just turned around and walked off and left you standing there batting your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I'm spread all over the table. But, but about three months later, it was all done, all sold. Uh, it, just amazing. And, and people think you're just making up stories when you tell this stuff. But like I said, it's just a lifestyle. It, you, know, you got to believe, doubt not in your heart, believe what you say and it'll come to pass. And it, uh, well, quantum physics explains it. Well, it uh, does because there are two different things here. We have the natural realm and we have the spiritual realm. We also have a classical physical realm where everything's solid or appears to be. Then we have the, the subatomic, the quantum area. And they're two different realms. And what gets people messed up is they try to take one realm and, and put it in the other realm. And from what we understand, God's laws, it is this unseen realm, the quantum realm. It's the unseen realm, the spiritual realm, the realm of spiritual law that causes the physical realm to come into existence. What we see today, when we see trees, when we see buildings, when we look at the earth, we look at the stars, it was all created by spiritual law from the unseen realm. It doesn't go backwards. You have to start from the unseen. That means the unseen realm in your heart where you're convinced of something, where you have faith. It's from the words that you speak that you draw from this soup of possibilities in life. It's an unseen thing in the spirit realm. And you take from it and you bring it into existence. That sounds scriptural to me. All things are possible to him that believeth. <laughs> and the key is the belief. Yeah. Now, if you go out there and say, well, Charles Capps told me to speak to this ground, so I'm going to speak to it, but I think it's just a bunch of junk, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's your conviction of belief. That's one of the major problems with people that, that set out to try it. it. It takes weeks and months, and sometimes longer, several months, to get all of that unbelief out of you to where you can believe and just speak what you believe and believe what you speak instead of having all this vocabulary that takes away from the ability to release faith. Uh, you know, people say, tickle me to death, laugh, thought to die, die to go, gone, die if don't. Well, you're not going to speak anything into existence except problems for yourself uh, when you talk that way. Uh, and it inhibits your ability to release faith in every word. But, but let's, let's talk about this unseen realm because we see, we see in uh, uh, the second chapter of uh, uh, Second Kings, the sixth chapter, where Elisha, was surrounded by an army. 
And his Gehazi went out and said, Master, what are we going to do? Uh, how are we going to do? I mean, we're surrounded. And he said, there's more with us than there is with them. Now, you know, I've studied that for years and, and uh, studied the power of words. Were those angels there before he said that? It's a good question. I don't believe they were because the scripture says you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart. And when he saw the problem, he spoke the answer. More with us than is with them. And the angel said, glory to God, we got a job to do. Let's get at it. And, and, and they showed up. And I know I can't prove that exactly, but, but from the scripture, uh, his voicing that and saying that, I don't know that he saw those angels before he said that. Well, I think quantum faith sort of bears this out in that it talks about that if you look at the little particle and the, the electron going around the nucleus and the atom, the scientists don't really know whether that even exists before somebody looks at it. Mm -hmm. They think that it exists just in a wave state, maybe kind of like a cloud where there's nothing certain there. But when someone looks at it, then it suddenly takes one place, one location. And so to me, that, that reflects possibly what happened there. He said, there's more with us than there are with them. And he looked, he focused on it. He said, I believe the angels of God are with us, here to help us, and they're there. You see, the scripture says, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. But this was more than the angel of the Lord. This was a multitude Multitudes. of angels. Uh, so uh, he called them. He called, he called them. things that were not as though they were. I, I literally believe that he was operating in the principle of what Jesus taught in the New Testament, calling things that are not as though they were. Well, I've certainly called for angels on occasion. I remember <laughs> one time I was driving in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I was on the inside lane on a curve on the freeway. And there was an 18-wheeler on my right. There was a vehicle immediately in front of me. I believe it was an 18-wheeler. And then someone behind me. And I was sort of sandwiched in. And as we came around the corner, there were cars stopped. There was a wreck or something. And I realized that I can't get, I can't move over. I can't stop. I can't go over the rail. I can't do anything. And just in that split second when I saw that, I said, God, I thank you that your angels are with me. And it was like I blinked and I looked and I was on the other side of all that wreck, but everything was behind me. Now, I had no sense of being lifted up, of levitating, of I think I just disassembled and reassembled on the other part. I, I think those angels just did whatever they had, to, whatever do. They had to do. But I didn't know what else to say. God, I thank you. Your angels are with me. And I believe they were there instantly. Well, see, the scripture says that, that angels hearken to the voice of God's word. And uh, when you keep God's word in your mouth, they have an assignment that the angels have charge over me. They keep me in all my ways, and my pathways, life, blessing, and health. And uh, uh, when you keep that, you create an atmosphere or an aura about you that, that has all these possibilities. <laughs> and uh, when, you, when you bring it down to the Word of God, then you solidify the possibilities to the good side and to the bad side. Well, faith takes you out of this natural realm, and it puts you in the, law, in the realm where God's laws operate and where you can function there and bring into this realm what needs to be brought here or dissolve whatever needs to be dissolved. Faith yeah. is what puts you in that other realm. Yeah. Uh, and, and the word spoken, you know, there was a place where the, this king had come against, what was it, Hezekiah or one of them there, and, and uh, he said, uh, he went to the Lord about it, to God about it, and uh, the next day that the angels had uh, slew 185,000 men one night. <laughs> I mean, the plague upon them. And uh, the, because he spoke comfortably to his 
people about it. He didn't get in fear. And you know, this is one thing I've noticed. You never see where angels got involved where people were in fear. It was when they were in faith. That's right. Absolutely right. Quantum faith, quantum physics, and the Word of God fits together like love. Fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? Absolutely. It really is. The, uh, the thing that, that uh, most people don't realize is that, that uh, they're working it in reverse. But let's see, okay. we get our product offer. We're about to run out of time here. We better okay. slow down and do it. Well, uh, we have offer number 2248. It's how to win battles, be successful, and influence angels. Just along the subject that we're talking about today, this is a, either a two CD series or two cassette tapes you can order for $12 plus $4 postage and handling. And we have our 800 number up on the screen there, 1-877-396-9400. That is a toll-free number. Or you can go to our website, www.charlescaps.com. And also, if you would like to have a DVD of today's program, you can also order that. Call and request it. It'll be $10, and uh, plus the shipping on for this program today. Uh, the scripture in uh, Psalm 103, uh, verse 19 says, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, his kingdom ruleth over all. Uh, bless the Lord, his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Now listen to this. They do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His Word. Well, the Word of God is considered a commandment where Jesus said, You'll have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart. He shall have whatsoever he saith. The angels know He said that. He says here, Bless the Lord His angels, excel in strength, do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His Word. If you keep God's Word in your mouth, give voice to God's Word. That may be the only audible voice of God you'll ever hear, but it'll bring the angels on the scene. They, how to win battles, be successful, and influence angels. Your words, speaking the Word of God, influences angels. You need to know that. Keep God's Word in your mouth. Until next time, this is Charles and Annette Capps reminding you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Ready or not, he's coming. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.